Hey y'all, I'm Christina Royster, host of the Young Black Independent Native Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen, Apple, Spotify, Google, every platform, I'm probably on it. So make sure you subscribe, rate, and review the show. And you can follow the podcast on Instagram and Facebook at The Ideal Podcast. Today, I want to talk about Broadway. And my Young Black and Opinionated listeners probably usually don't care about Broadway. But let me tell you why you should care. If you care about Black creatives, then you're going to care about this story. So let me start with a little background. I personally used to do musical theater in high school. I haven't been in a play since 12th grade, but it was really a big part of my life and I still really enjoy the arts and I love musical theater. I love a good musical, um, but I haven't been to Broadway since 2018. I think the last show I saw was Aladdin and um, I haven't really kept up with Broadway news, but don't get it twisted. I still care about black creatives and anything that a black person touches. And if a black person is getting looked over, I'm going to talk about it on this podcast. So, of course, last night was the Tony Awards. And if you thought that Broadway was any different than Hollywood or the music industry, you're sadly mistaken. Broadway is very white, very elitist, and specifically we're talking about Slave Play. Slave Play is a play written by Jeremy O'Harris, nominated for 12 Tony Awards, and it won zero. It was completely shut out last night at the Tony Awards. So, why is that? Could it be the title and the subject matter? Slave Play? Could it be that it's written by a black male? We don't know, but let me give you a little bit of information. So, what really makes this sad to me, obviously, like, okay, a black person got looked over. But what really makes it sad to me is the work that Jeremy O'Harris does behind the curtains, behind the scenes. Not only did he give us an Emmy-nominated play, but he also does some work behind the scenes. So, let me just read you this excerpt about Jeremy O'Harris Um, from Fast Company. It says the creator of the acclaimed slave play developed several creative workarounds to make sure that more than just rich white people saw his show. So this is how important it was to him that his show opens the doors for black theater goers who black people don't normally go to musical theater. Black people don't normally uh, it's a very small industry as far as the black community in musical theater. So let me just read you. Racial trauma, sexual repression, they're not the average topics for a Broadway comedy, but Jeremy O'Harris is not an average playwright. When he got the chance to take Slave Play, his uncompromising comedic drama about three interracial couples to the Golden Theater last year, this was written in 2020 by the way, he told his producing partners that he'd only do so if young black and brown theater goers had the same access as the older white ticket buyers who typically patronize Broadway. Already, Harris had been appealing offhandedly to his rich friends via Twitter to purchase tickets and leave them at the box office for anyone to use. That concept became the basis for Slave Play's Broadway Plus One ticket initiative, in which people could pay an extra $25 at checkout to subsidize seats for others. Producers later said that first-time ticket buyers made up more than 30% of sales, a number usually in the single digits. So that's the kind of work that Jeremy O'Harris is doing behind the scenes to make Broadway more inclusive and accessible to everybody. And so for his, for his play to get nominated for 12 Tony Awards and not win any, it's hurtful. And this is what he had to say about the loss. Um, I mean, this, 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 This whole awards thing brings up the question like how much weight and how much value should these awards really have in the creative industry? When we talk about the Grammys, um, you'll see in this Twitter thread somebody tweeted like Rihanna's auntie was nominated for eight Grammys and she won zero. Like when when we talk about artists who've been overlooked at the Grammys and actors who've been overlooked at the Emmys, the Oscars, we just recently talked about on the podcast how so many black and and, and people of color and and diverse categories at the Emmys, but no people of color won major acting awards. So it's the same deal here. A play called Slave Play, y'all loved it enough to nominate it 12 times, but it didn't win a single one. This is what he had to say. First of all, um, at freaking, what time was this? At three in the morning, he posted a video and, and put the caption, losers party. So I, he's obviously sarcastic. He's obviously, he's probably taking it hard. Honestly, I would be mad too. Um, oh, actually, I think he changed his Twitter name. Jeremy O'Harris changed his 
his Twitter bio to playwright was on Broadway this season. New York Times critics pick slave play. Now I'm not. No one is. I spent my 20s devoted to a craft in a coma. And that that's a bold statement to make in your Twitter bio, but it honestly feels like it. Like all of the new talent and energy being pumped into these industries, music, acting, Broadway, and they still keep things the same old business as usual, the same white guys at the top. And sometimes it's discouraging when you clearly have a successful play, but it's not you're not seeing a change in the industry. Sometimes you might say, why bother? I would feel like that too. But um, he seemed to have a better attitude towards the end of the night. He tweeted this. Um, wait, where's the... He had like a whole Twitter thread. I just want to read it to y'all. Can someone point the hoteps who said, oh, white people just love slave, sh slave shit so much. They give it all the awards to tonight. The people who nominated a slave pay play were significantly younger and blacker than anyone who voted. So there's the problem right there. The people who nominated and the people who voted are not the same. He said, anyway, partying tonight in Manhattan because history is made in spite. That's a great attitude. You were nominated 12 times and that right there is history making in itself. But we still wanted to win, you know. And so then he says, LOL, also, I told my mom this was going to happen this morning because we knew who these folks were when we put the play on stage in New York City. And that's why we put a mirror up. So this is what happens in any craft. When you decide to speak up against the establishment and make a bold statement, you're going to have some haters. You're going to have people who don't support you. You might get blackballed in the industry, but I'm so glad that Jeremy O'Hare said, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to put this play out anyway. And he says, slave play has never won one of the major awards of any of the great voting bodies, but changed the culture and has inspired thousands of people who didn't care about theater before. That's facts. I just told y'all black people probably wasn't caring about theater. <laughs> Only a couple plays have been able to get black people to Broadway. Lion King, slave play, <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> and so he said, I saw someone randomly reading the play in Sylvania. We already run one. I wrote my play for a basement. So he realizes that not everybody's going to love it, but those few people in the basement who who support him and care about him, he is appreciative. He doesn't have a bad attitude, it seems. He said, I'd be more upset about this if I hadn't already been given a platform because of Slave Play Broadway to enhance hundreds of other writers' work with my HBO grants or Bushwick Star Pet Project work this year. I literally produced a play that got a Pulitzer nom. So I guess you can't be mad, but you can be mad when... You get nominated 12 times and it, sometimes it just feels like, okay, did y'all just throw these nominations at me? Like throw me a bone? Like you just did this for fun. You thought it would be cute because I was expecting to win. But I guess it seems like he didn't get his hopes up and he wasn't expecting to win. So that's what I have to say about Slave Play kind of being ousted at the Tony Awards. Jeremy O'Harris was a little salty, but it seems like he still keeps his head up. And I just wanted y'all to be aware about what's going on on Broadway. Support black creatives in every single field. I don't care if you're weird and you do cosplay or, well, cosplay is not weird, but you know what I mean? Even if you're doing something against society, against the status quo, and you feel like people aren't celebrating your craft, somebody's watching and somebody cares. All right. So hope you guys enjoyed this conversation from Young Black and Opinionated. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow the podcast on Instagram and Facebook at the YBO Podcast. And I'll be back later with more. Bye.